I'm Jordan Carlos, and it's time for, can we talk about this? Aloha, Mr. Han. The biggest movie in 1982 was about an extraterrestrial phoning home. For Ridgemont High, there was another out of this world character phoning the pizza guy. Pour the double cheese and sausage. Right here, dude. I could not be more excited and honored to have the one and only Ginny Slate. Ginny, what's good? Hi. Is this the first time you've ever watched Fast Times at Ridgemont High? Yes, <laughs> you're right. This movie is 1982. I was born in 1982, so I completely missed it. Um, and yeah. one of those things that after a while, it's like been referenced so many times that I was like, I'm sure I basically know what it is. Welcome to the party, Ginny. Um, I wanted to ask like what you thought of the movie then. I really enjoyed it and it genuinely surprised me. This movie is like much more of like a film, you know, like I, I thought it was like yeah. gonna be like about like surfers and cheese doodles or whatever. What surprised me the most was Sean Penn being like light and funny because he never went back there again. What's not surprising is that he's doing like a full performance. When he looks at Mr. Han and he's like, you dick. <laughs> I was like blown away by that. You know, like he is really, really disappointed and offended. You feel bad for him. Like he's kind of like, what did I get wrong here? So uh, that pool scene yeah. with Phoebe Cates. I mean, I remember seeing that before I saw the movie. What did you make of that scene? I was so shocked by the boobs. You don't need to see the boobs in order to understand that the brother's going to masturbate. But I will say they showed her, but they didn't reveal Judge Reinhold. No, it would be absolutely crazy to see like a boner, you know? And <laughs> the fact is that the implications for Judge Reinhold and for Phoebe Cates are completely different. And it frames the rest of their careers totally differently. And it's a huge risk for her. What really struck me upon watching this again was the casual homophobia in the film. It's insane. I think that's because it was embedded in um, in like a homophobia that really ran through our culture and wasn't called out or identified yet. Gay panic was so alive and well. And gay panic was a big part of like my high school experience. Right now, there is just zero tolerance, at least in me, for hearing any kind of slur at all. Stacy, what are you waiting for? You're 15 years old. Tell me, what did you think of Jennifer Jason Lee's character and her overall arc? I really enjoyed her arc because she does a lot of kind of like major things. She has sex, she gets an abortion, she tries to find a new sexual partner. It reminds me of like my own virginity loss experience of being like, look, everyone like told me that there would be some guy who was like my boyfriend who would like put rose petals all over a hotel room or something. But like for me, I was like, mm, I'm in a bunk bed and this is my weed dealer. You know, like it was just not that. I just want you to know that I'm pregnant. When they made this, and Jennifer Jason Lee has the abortion, there hadn't been this distilled opposition to imagery like this in a film. First of all, I think that comes from having it be a female director. Mm. But also, it's surprising that it's presented with neutrality. That's a very rare window of time that you're seeing there where it's like, yeah, she gets an abortion and like, it's not about people outside the clinic with a sign and it's not about should she, mm. couldn't she. I think Amy Heckerling did a really good job of letting there be a little bit more space for her humanity and that that's like actually interesting enough. And I thought what was interesting was she wasn't broken by the whole event. She was still a whole person. She's not a victim, but yeah. she's also not a hero. And I, I really enjoy that. Jenny, thanks so much for talking to us. Thank you, Jordan. This has been Can We Talk About This? I'm your host, Jordan Carlos. Enjoy the movie.